Good morning uh, from Precision Transmissions uh, this Friday morning. Uh, what we got here is a 2003 60 E swap into a 99K uh, Blazer uh, four wheel drive. And uh, it come in with a mass airflow sensor code. And uh, when you have a mass airflow sensor code with these, it'll mess with the pressure physically in the tranny. And uh, you have to get that fixed instantly. If not, you'll burn the tranny up in them. So we're gonna tear this uh, down and see what type of damage it did. So let's see what it did. We're taking out the uh, overdrive uh, servo cover and piston. This piston here is what applies the overdrive band. Now this has already got a shift kit in it of some sort. It's already got a Corvette servo in it. Right here, this is the smaller servo compared to your standard servo. So, when we put the wide band in, the band's so much bigger, we don't put this spacer in there because uh, they put this spacer in there to take up some uh, pin to band clearance to take that up right there. But the wide band is so wide that uh, we have to leave that out. If we put it in there, it'll actually apply the band. This is an early model 4L60. The bell housing doesn't come off. It is still a four wheel drive. Got your aluminum dust cover the bolts here. Now this train, it's nice and pretty like it's been rebuilt. It's probably been car washed and painted because you can look in here and see that it's never been painted. And then the torque converter right here has uh, kind of been hit and missed a little bit. So. But if you smell this thing, oh. I mean, it is just stinky, stinky. <laughs> I mean, it is cooked. It got that hot that quick. It is probably going to stink up the shop for a week. Now, Gosh. We'll upgrade the pan. We'll go to the later model 4060E pan. It'll give it a couple more quarts, which will have a dimple in the bottom of it here. And it'll go with a deeper uh, long neck bottom filter and stuff on it. I like to do that just for a hot rod application, four wheel drive application. Instead of putting the drive shaft, you can see the discoloration. How yellow it turns from the pretty red to your yellow. That's your normal color to your yellow. Yes, sir. Now this here is your pulse width modulating solenoid right here. That pulsates your lockup on for your torque converter right here. Now we come in here and block this valve right here. Instead of making the uh, clutch uh, pulsate on, we just lock it up uh, like a normal clutch. It'll actually feel like a shift instead of uh, not really feeling it at all. All you'll do is uh, sit in the tachometer. Well, when we lock it up like that, it'll actually feel like a shift and the people think they got them a five speed. It, it's pretty noticeable. It, it, it makes it a really nice train. Now this is basically your lockup solenoid right here. This solenoid right here. Looks like we got a new harness and everything. Yeah, somebody's updated the harness. Now this here is your 3-2 downshift solenoid. When you hit passing gear, this forces a downshift. This is your pressure control solenoid. Both your shift solenoids. And then your pillow switch that tells the computer that the tranny made a shift. tranny down all these bolts are 10 millimeter and you have three longer bolts right here that are eight millimeter these two are eight millimeter too but these are real short. 
they're really noticeable. You can see they're short. But these right here are longer. So if you take and put one of these anywhere down this barrel right here, this will physically rub on the components on the inside of the tranny. It's not much longer, but it's enough to do it. So you want to make sure in this L right here, you want to get them eight millimeter bolts put in there. Of course, this is your pillow switch here. There's little switches right here that the fluid pushes on. They'll actually click when you push a screwdriver on them. This is an early design here. Metal would fall down in here and uh, cause shorts and stuff like that. And they finally started putting a cover on this to keep this all clean in here where metal couldn't cause that problem. So this is an early design. Our valve body. Now here's your check balls and stuff that control fluid to your bands and clutches. You have different size. You have your ball here that sets here that feeds it, which will shut it off, and then you have a pressure up hole that'll physically keep the clutch applied and pressure up. Now you can enlarge these holes right here to make it shift a lot firmer in different ways. If you're a tech, you can do it or get your shift kit. It'll explain how to do it. That ball didn't go in that square trough, by the way. It fell there. Now, this here is your one two accumulator. This here actually softens the second gear shift. Let me get this. So, is what they do is they use different spring uh, tensions on this piston right here to control how the band comes on. And they put fluid on behind this and push down on it to control it. Now this does have a shift kit in it because it's got multiple springs in here. Normally there's usually two or sometimes there's not even any in here from the factory. They just leave a blank hole depending on what type of vehicle it is. We'll come in here and stand some shims up on top of this and shorten this stroke of this piston instead of letting it uh, do a full inch and a quarter stroke, inch and three quarter stroke. We'll shorten it down to about an inch stroke. That way it uh, actually plies the band a lot quicker. Uh, shortens uh, the stroke and everything. So. That's a top secret deal right there. I don't tell everybody that. <laughs> Sorry guys, re repositioning camera. Now here's your fourth gear accumulator piston. Get it out of there. Same way, it's got a shift kit spring in it. Uh, the band comes back on for fourth, pushes on this to soften the band when it comes back on. What we do is we block these solid where they don't even move at all. We'll stack two pistons on top, put a three uh, 20,000 shim in here and stop this from even moving at all. It just gives it so much uh, a better fourth gear shift. When you do that, you better make sure that your piston sits below. Below surface, yes. Mm. Don't stack it too high. assembly right here when you uh, move the shifter and you put it in park you're moving this right here and then when the drive shaft turns uh, it locks into park right there and now the shaft won't turn so get a little idea of how park works almost looks like it's been into that it can do a good job painting yeah it could have been Like I said, it did have a shift kit in it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's got signs of that right off the bat.
So this is the pump here. I'm gonna look in there and see if they did anything to it. No. I see they they built a somebody's been into it before and built it because of it's got the disc and stuff. But they didn't put a 13 vein pump in this thing. They just left the standard pump in here. And uh, anytime uh, we put one in here, we go back with a uh, complete rebuild kit, and it comes with uh, a 13 vein where you physically get 13 new paddles in this pump and a new slide and a rotor and everything like that. It comes in a complete kit. So that's a big upgrade when you do that. You, basically, we do it to every one, so. Well, it's a. It's a must for yeah, us. Yeah, it's a must for us. So whether it's your grandma's car, your daily driver, your farmer, race car, whatever, always upgrade that pump. Oh, almost dropped it. It's easier to come in here and push this band strut up right here with a screwdriver. Uh, it locks go. into the bands. If you don't push that up, it's really hard to pull this drum out. So you can push that up right there and take it, grab this with a pair of pliers and pull it out. And now you can just grab this drum right here and pull it right out. Just kind of shake it, pull it right out. Just like that. If you don't do that, you cannot get it out. You'll fight it, fight it, fight it. And, uh, you're gonna beat yourself to death. Now we soak all of our bands and clutches and stuff that way when we put them in the tranny, they never uh, do anything. They just they work right off the bat. If you put them in dry, they'll slip, bang, do all kinds of crazy stuff on shifting. But this is our band compared to that band. Now this is a an aftermarket band. It's not a Kevlar band. It's just a, re a remanufactured band that they. Uh, put new lining on where ours is a Kevlar band uh, it's really nice we put them side by side yeah I mean, awesome yeah. I mean you can see this band here just barely covers the drum where when you get our band you know it covers uh, a lot more of the drum totally different when it comes to the band so another great upgrade yeah big upgrade we do it we put them in every one and every one we do, we put it in there no matter what. So. Now this is your reverse clutch. No modifications did, just put it back normal. And you can see they got a really nice clutch in here. So the, the clutch looks brand new. So. Now, I do notice here though, for as, as new as these clutches are, and as old as these bushings are in this tranny, these bushings were never replaced at all. Mm. They're just, they're just, you can just tell just by uh, looking at them, mm -hmm. how bad they look. So, when we do it, all the uh, bushings. Let's get it down here a little bit farther and see if we can see. Another problem that they did. It goes back to uh, leaving these load springs out again uh, for this 3 4 clutch. Oh, yep, yeah, there it is. Uh, when you leave that spring out of there, it'll burn that clutch right up. Uh, they put these load springs in here to slow this clutch from coming on and give our big, that band time to come off. So if you leave them out, this clutch comes on so fast that this, this band don't uh, come off in time. So you're in two gears at one time for just a millisecond. But these clutches are so tiny and this band's so big that this band will always beat up on this clutch. So, and when we put our big band in here, it's gonna beat up on this clutch even worse. <clears throat> so you wanna always put your load springs back in here. Now, he's already, this is the forward clutch that moves the vehicle forward. Why this clutch is burned up, I don't really know. It's kind of odd and, until we get deeper into the drum and see if he, it's got bad seals or something like that. But if you look at this brand new clutch here and then you flip it over, 
so it just cooked it. And these clutches will get be hotter on in the center because that's where they all meet together. But you can see what it does to them. Okay. So he's definitely got a problem. We got to figure out what's going on, and I've almost I think I already found it. So. Uh, what happened is here, I'm pretty sure when I stack it up, they left a, a steel out right here. Oh, they did? Yeah, they left the wave out. Yeah, they did. And that's why they're missing a, a steel in here. Uh, that's funny. They and, did. and it's got too much uh, clearance in the clutch pack, and that's mm -hmm. why it did that. But we've already seen they left the wave completely out. And you can't do that unless you add another one. So there should be two here instead of one to, to, to take up the clearance. So that's what happened here. Good eye, sir. The Sprague races are still good. Let me see. It's true. Uh, there's no dents. We can scotch brought this stuff up and put a new Sprague in it and everything look good. Go back to the bushings, they're, they're all used, so. A little deeper. No, it's right here on this side, right, right there. I'm trying to help him see his snap ring's tiny. There it is. Get out or something. Got it. Now it does have the, uh... Huh. what did they do? Okay. This is some awesome stuff, okay? Here we go. Now this here is uh, where somebody didn't know what they were doing. And what they did is they put a washer in here. Now let me show you what, what goes there. Okay, here we go. But well, since we have a, a four tab shell, you would put a four tab washer like they did, but you would put a, a, a hub, a flat hub like that, that way the washer will run flat on the hub here. Well, what they did is they put a late model, which is the best one to use, because that's what we always put in there, uh, but you put a bearing. They upgraded it to a bearing right here when they added tow haul to the shifter button, see? And, and it, this old style takes a thrust washer. Well, they tried to put a thrust washer against here and it just burned it up. Now, you can take this washer out, throw it away and use this shell with a bearing style just like this and it'll work just fine. Done it a million times. We put a new shell in every one and uh, whether it's a bearing or a four tab, that they'll work every time, no, no problem. But, that's another problem uh, when people don't really know what they're doing. Bearing style, washer style. We upgrade them to everyone to like this. Uh, mm. When they put tow haul in them, they put that bearing in. So. Another must. Looks like it fried that washer down there, dude. There's another washer down here that's on the back side of here. Uh, you can put them in brass or plastic. Uh, that runs back here like that. Uh, but when he put this in here, it just smashed it all together. This shaft in the front probably wouldn't even turn and he didn't even check it. He just put it in and, and when he fired it up, it just did all this damage. If this would have been a uh, 700R4 or something like this, this tranny would have quit working instant because of the metal. But being that's the 4L60E, the computer don't know that it's making metal, so it'll set there and work until it just destroys itself. Now this is your low reverse clutch here. It comes on in reverse and then the low. Here's where that tab washer sets like that down on it.
and then this goes down on top of it, on top of here, like that. Give you an idea. Uh, this is a spag, it's a one way. Now, also, when you build these things, let me tell you a little secret. They make two different ones of these. They make a thick and a thin right here. You'll see that lip that he's trying yeah, to grab. If you have to replace this, you better look for that right there because they make a thick and a thin and it'll get you if you don't. Now this does have the four pinion planted in it. Got some really nice clutches here. Didn't burn them up or nothing. So, just some more updates we do to this. Uh, we take this, if we build a race car application, we'll take and leave this wave out and then we'll restack two steels and, and grind off some tabs. Uh, that way when you shift it from uh, manual low to second, this clutch comes off instantly uh, because your band's gonna come on so fast that this clutch won't have time to come off because it's trying to relax this wave right here. So if you put two flat steels in here, no more than this clutch moves, uh, this clutch is off when you shift it to second gear. So you definitely want to get rid of this thing if you're doing any race car applications. So, well, it looks like to me, uh, the uh, air, uh, mass airflow sensor, uh, probably caused a lot of this problem. We'll get a new one put on and get the code gone, get the tranny all freshened up with our 14 clutch uh, Z pack, uh, new seals, bushings, and the whole nine yards, and uh, get this guy back going. So, if y'all need anything, give us a holler at Precision Transmissions. Have a good day.